All right, good afternoon. This is going to be just a quick little 30 second to a minute video. Uh, and this is just because during our Zoom meeting today, uh, we decided to hop into Desmos and see what Desmos would do with an, how, what you could do with an antiderivative. This is question number 15. It was the first problem you were assigned to do today. Uh, the antiderivative from one to four, uh, because it's in Desmos, I switched up the variable from u to x. And we just typed in the function exactly the way it is presented to you in the textbook. And you can see it gives you the output. It gives you the solution here, 0.66 repeating, which, uh, of course, I hope everyone recognizes as two-thirds. Uh, in order to do this, there's a little keyboard button here at the bottom that... Uh, I have to close that. So there's a keyboard down here at the bottom. And under functions, under miscellaneous, is the antiderivative symbol right here. Uh, when you put that in, so we'll do it. You can see it puts the cursor right down here at the bottom of it. You type in your first number. Uh, you hit the up arrow key, you type in the second number, and then you put in your function. Make sure if you're dealing with fractions, you utilize uh parentheses effectively so that you can set them up properly make sure they look exactly like they do in the textbook so one of the nice things about using desmos is you can make the equation appear exactly the way it does in the textbook which isn't always true for things like a graphing calculator especially if you have an older graphing calculator newer ones are a little better um remember to put your dx at the end so we know it's doing the antiderivative of the x variable and it will give you the uh, output, the actual numeric solution that you would get from doing this. So um, quick tip there, you can utilize that to check all of your answers. I really don't want to see just numeric answers for these. That's, of course, is the end goal is to get the correct numeric answer. But I'd like to make sure you're doing the antiderivative po properly. Um, so if you go through the process and do it, and then you check it in here and you get a different numeric answer than what you got on pencil and paper, I would go back and look at your antiderivative, make sure you did that correctly, and then go back and look at your, uh, you know, your arithmetic when you plugged in your limits of integration. So that's it. Uh, have a, a good afternoon and a good weekend, and we'll talk to everyone next week and see uh, most of you in person on Tuesday or Wednesday. Have a good weekend.